Welcome back. New house, old soul. How do we get it? We're going through a number of different steps in the process of building a house and how do we get a really great house? How do we get a house with an old soul? Today we're talking about foundations. series hosted by Brent Hall new house old soul sponsored by stellar floors and the Unico system so how do you get a new house with an old soul when you're dealing with a new product like concrete right if you have a slab foundation how do you capture the old soul well there's a number of different tricks we'll talk about today of creating the look of an old house but using modern materials we're gonna look at the history of foundations the history of building and talk about how to create that special look for your house even though we're using new materials but when you understand the history in the past it'll help you build better today We've got a number of different foundations going on around the city that we're building with. What is that history? What's going on? Essentially, we got to remember that if, if we're looking on this timeline of history, this is Egypt and the pyramids and stuff like that, or the Greeks and the Romans back there. And then this is today. So this is 2020. Zero's here and this is 2000 BC or whatever. Concrete is basically, you know, in the last hundred years. Concrete foundations that we're using are not something that has been around for a thousand years, okay? Furthermore, if we blow this up, essentially early 1900 is when concrete starts to be able to be used more regularly, okay? Steel and concrete in high-rise buildings and things like that. Buildings started changing right around 1900. Slab foundations, right, are a post-World War II thing. So even slabs, okay, and, and that whole idea of slab is also within that little 100-year period here. And then you talk about insulated forms, ICF, insulated concrete foundation forms, that's even in the last 20 years. One of the things about concrete early on in, in the early 1900s is a lot of these houses had no steel in place okay so the the idea of using concrete was sound there's books on concrete houses we actually looked at in the concrete house here in Fort Worth but at the same time same period of that house early 1900s in concrete I see it done very well and then I'll go look at houses and I'll see it done very poorly where the concrete's breaking up now now 100 years later it's because there was no steel put in there so realize that even in that first hundred years or in the last hundred years say we've been using concrete it took probably 20 to 30 years for there to be a standard quality thing that required a certain amount of steel in the concrete that kept it from cracking up. So a lot of the early 1900s foundations are or can be a mess. So what was the foundation in 1881? Well, we know because on that Victorian house that we're doing down in Granbury, it has a stone foundation. And so really, you know, in America, if we're in America, you know, 1700, right? And so if we're just looking at the last 300 years of building in America, up until the beginning of concrete foundations in the early 1900s, things were either stone or they are brick, okay? And so stone obviously already comes from the ground, already in the ground. If this is our building, then there is oftentimes a rock wall foundation that went down a certain amount and in the south it wasn't quite as far as it was up in new england why because we don't have frost heaves we don't have the ground freezing four feet below the ground okay foundations are deeper to get below that frost line so that they don't heave right because if if you're building in this area and the water and the ground freezes two feet below it could take your whole foundation and push it up right because the ground freezes it's going to lift it up so think about a lot of houses in the south they're up on piers right and so the bodark stump which is a very common thing that if you look go into fairmount which is the 1900s a lot of the piers okay that are supporting a house and remember if this is our house in the early 1900s the foundation was pier and beam okay pier and beam means that there's an exterior slab wall right and then there's these piers 
that, that come across around your foundation that then your framing is laid out on top of these piers, right? And then you, you build your walls. That pier and beam foundation, looking at it like this way, we've got a foundation wall that goes down. This is early 1900s. And then let's say the dirt is, let me see, the dirt is right in here, right? Inside the house, they might have a pad or something of concrete, but this sometimes was a boat arch stump, okay? Boat arch is a very rot resistant hardwood that termites couldn't eat and things like that and became very, very popular as a way. And so then your framing goes right on top of this, right? And then your house is built up from there. Okay, so most houses before the era of the slab, okay, and slab was William Levitt when he started building Levittown, that the houses would not have basements. Why? It saved so much money. Slab foundation was, was cheaper, faster, quicker way of building. Essentially, this little scenario right now is, is kind of how those foundations were laid out. This before 1900 is stone and brick, okay, depending on, you know, where you are. Now, if you're out in the middle of the country, in order to make bricks, okay you would have had to have build a kiln you'd have to find clay it was quite an endeavor so brick foundations were you know popular and, and maybe common in a city but out in the country you didn't have those things so you were using rock here in texas it would be limestone rock which is what we find at that 1881 house in granbury where that brick wall we don't think that there is a spread footing at the bottom but that whole thing right is all stone going up and even going down into their basement and then it had a dirt floor okay so this is a great book this is radford 1911 i believe and it, you know he's showing a number of different building techniques and building things. Here's his one on foundations. Notice there's a number of ways of doing this. This is all brick construction, okay? So this had been in the city, but one way of building was actually to drive piles down, most likely a, a wooden tree driven into the ground. It was very soft mud. Try to find something very strong and then put a, a beam right on top of it. So certainly not a three-story or four-story building you'd build that way, but certainly an early construction would be using piles. But we've got brick construction going on here on some kind of stone or some kind of concrete footer down below. But what, what this then shows is a number of different, the bonding patterns that go with these brick foundations that they would have to be bonded together. And if we look at the stone foundations, right, how those were put together, I've talked a lot in some of my videos about coining, okay? And coining is where these bricks are kind of fingered together in the corners so that they kind of lock a corner together, very important. We're talking about laying a cornerstone over a building. The cornerstone would be that, that on a corner, right? Down at the base, that kind of anchors both sides and it allows everything to be built off of it. So cornerstones were very important when they were made of stone. You know, the particular problems that we have in Texas with foundations is we have expansive soils. What does that mean? There's a lot of clay in our soils. And so clay, when it gets wet, expands. And when it dries out, it shrinks, okay? So most of the houses in North Texas have foundation issues. And I will put in an ad of, you know, $2,000 to level and shim the house. I mean, what they do, quite common, measure the house, find out where the low spots are, and we'll actually put metal shims between the floor joists and the beams in order to level the house out. Okay, so that's pretty common here. That Granberry house, you know, the shape of it's like this, and we've got that L going off the back, right? This whole thing, okay, is stone on the outside. We are building a kind of an addition and a new basement right here. Now, we are going to build that with concrete, okay? We're probably going to build it with block, an infill block. So what we're going to do is we're going to pour a beam wall on the outside of this thing. We'll put our hadite block right up here, okay? The hadite block, that concrete block, if you look down at the top of it, right, it is, it is made like this, where it's kind of hollow in the middle. And this is all the, the concrete all around. These holes end up getting filled with concrete. So this will become our foundation wall. In order to make this hadeye block and be kind of porous, we will then tar and then do a dimple mat here and have a foundation, a French drain, okay? So this will all be gravel in here and we'll have a French drain that will keep this area dry. So we are gonna create a mechanical space underneath this house. But one of the other things we're trying to do here is we're trying to make sure that it doesn't look like that from the outside. So if you look at the, at the house this way, 
we're going to be real careful about the height that this outside ground goes to and we might go back with stone here that's exposed so that we even though it's going to be block underneath there so that we create the look and the feel of that new house old soul the point is today is you've got a lot of opportunity to create great foundations okay yet also have something with a new household soul. One of the things that we're gonna be talking about in this series is the balance that's required in building, right? Because foundations, I don't really wanna build a stone wall foundation here. One, because I don't think it'll last as long as a concrete foundation. I think that's superior material. But at the same time, I care deeply about how it's exposed and 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 what it looks like so I don't have a big you know concrete base going around the, the, the house when I want it to look like it's 200 years old. We're doing that, that great ranch project out west of here and we spent quite a bit of time working on that foundation maybe the most important thing besides material is maybe how you're making the basement or the crawl space dry okay and so in that case we had a very tall wall 14 feet tall somewhere in that range we had a spread footing in the bottom this was entirely concrete but we spent a lot of time weatherproofing the back side of this wall. We tarred it, okay? We put a dimple mat on it. Whether we do it with block, like we're doing it at that 1881 house, or concrete. The concrete on the barn project out there is because we built that barn into a hill. So our, you know, our land goes like this, and then there was a natural little gully that went down in this land. We put the barn right here, okay? So our wall on the outside, that basement wall, is retaining a lot of dirt. It's holding up a lot, and we really needed to make sure this wall had some beef and some, you know, heft to it. And so we excavated probably 10 feet behind that wall. We excavated so we could get all kinds of equipment and everything else back there. But then we backfilled this with dirt, but right close to the house, after the tar, after the nipple mat, after the French drain, we really had something that was gonna be dry, most importantly, and that, that was really the most important piece of, of making that basement usable, is making sure it was dry. So, you know, whether you do it with hay dye block, whether you do it with concrete, whether it's a slab or whatever else, concrete is the preferred material today, and you'll notice that on this house, our concrete will oftentimes stair step as it's going around here, because wherever that dirt is, we wanna make sure we hide that concrete and we just have stones so that we're conveying a story that it was an original stone building. I wanna head down to the 1881 house, show you that dig out, show you that foundation, and talk about how we're gonna lay this thing out. I really think we're gonna see a difference between you know building in the past and building today, and blending those two together so that it looks great. Remember, as we go through this whole series, it's really about finding a balance, right? Finding a balance of best product, best material for our foundation wall in this case, but also fighting for it aesthetically so that it looks right. But there's going to be balance that's going to take place in there. There's sometimes I'm going to say, no, 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 we've got to do it this old traditional way. In this case, and with, say, air conditioning, right, we don't want to live like they lived in before air conditioning. We want some of these modern conveniences. So we're going to be, at times, definitely putting in the best product, but also fighting it aesthetically so that we have the right look and the right feel. This 1881 house in Granbury, Texas, is a smaller town in Texas, really hasn't been changed a great deal, and it's really a great opportunity for us to go back and look at how foundations used to be built. Okay, guys, new house, old soul. You know, how do you, how do you get that? We're in Granbury right now. We're at an 1881 Italianate house. This is very original house, very early house for Texas. What we have here, how would they have built the foundation, right? They would have built it with stone. If you drive down the town square and look at the buildings here, you're gonna look at the natural quarried material that they had available to them. So most of those buildings are built with this local limestone. We're in a day and age in 1881 where you wouldn't have shipped slate from Vermont down here, right? We're not in a heavy railroad time period at that time, so you wouldn't have been shipping products from long ways away. So we're looking at a very natural material for them. We see a lot of it downtown here in Granbury. So we're looking at a local stone and this is how they would have built that wall in 1880. So come on down here guys, I wanna show you this foundation. 
And what you're seeing and what we're gonna scrape back to is this original stone foundation. Now, stone foundations are porous. Now, why are they porous? Well, because we've got these mortar joints between these stones. And as you get down into here, down into this softer rock, because it's been wet for so long, look how it's just breaking out. It's like, it's like sandstone, right? So is that just the mortar failing or, or is the stone failing? We're gonna have to dig into that more and kind of figure it out. But we're gonna carefully excavate down here, expose this corner, rebuild this corner. Here you see a, a stone foundation, guys, and the benefits of it, right, are in 1881, before you have a brick anywhere nearby, they can take this local quarry stone and actually build a foundation. Now, if you look at these stones, they have been worked, right? They haven't been tooled, but they've been worked. All of this chipping on the front of this thing has smoothed this face off. So this stone most likely would have been quarried somewhere nearby and then brought here and then worked in order to make this. Notice that we've got a coined corner here, right? There's the, the corner going around over this side. This side is going that way. Typically the way those stone foundations are worked is I've got my stones doing this, right? They're crossing one another back and forth as we go up this thing so that it can really lock in this corner. So you're seeing some of that stone work and some of, the, some of that stuff happen here. Means that this thing was very well built. Means that there, there was some skilled craftsmen doing this. This isn't something a farmer would have done. This is something that someone with an understanding of good building would have done. So good stuff here, but we're gonna go back with a concrete foundation and we're going up with a block wall, right? So a block wall is something we can still waterproof on the outside, we can still tar, still do our dimple mat, still have a French drain around the outside, still have a very dry basement for them, but something that's gonna last a lot longer. Okay guys, so we're back. What you're seeing now is the essence of that new household soul that we're trying to communicate because we've got a new Haydai block, concrete block foundation. We've got a new beam right down there, spread footer at the bottom. And then we've built a block foundation going up at the top. Now, what you notice there is that stone right at the top of the block. Now, why did we do that? Because if you look back at this corner, or you look around the other sides of the house, rock was the foundation of this original house, right? They, and we have now built up what would be our new basement in this house. But the important piece and the new house old soul piece is that we are mimicking the stone, okay? The layup of the stone coming across here as if this is original look, okay? We don't want on this historic house and this historic restoration to have, you know, this concrete block coming up because it's gonna be this instant clue like, wait a minute, what's going on? When did this get changed? What's, you know, what's happening here? This also is kind of that layer of just authenticity that we're trying to communicate, right? That this was this original piece. Now, when you go into the basement, when you're down there, it'll be completely new, right? So the problem with the old basement was that it was leaking bad, right? And so the water was really going into that space. So we are now gonna give her a mechanical space with a really high functioning basement down there that's completely new, but from the outside, it looks old. So the real key guys is to to be thinking through, right, when we have these new foundations. Say you have a slab foundation, what are you gonna do? How are you gonna disguise the fact that it's a slab foundation if you want it to look like a traditional house? In your beam wall, you do a drop down, right? You do something so that the brick actually is gonna go down, hide that, the grating comes across, and it looks like bricks coming out of there. You might, you know, widen the stance of that and put a water table brick, right? That, that would look like it's coming out of the ground as this big brick foundation. It's always thinking about how is this gonna look? What is this gonna communicate? How are we going to tell this story so that it works? If you want an old soul in the house, you don't have to give up all the new technology, new design things. There are ways to hide those things so that you can have a slab foundation, you can use concrete, have a engineered foundation, but also still have the look of that old house.